Capitalism, ideological conflict, deglobalization. The West is in danger of total collapse. Now this sounds like a bold statement to make. And no, I'm not talking about a cataclysmic event that will turn New York or London into a war zone overnight. I want to talk about the slow and painful death of the West that has begun long time ago. But like with climate change, we now just start to feel it. And if this is just a start, it will get ugly. Let's talk about the problems no one wants to admit. And no, China and Russia will have an even darker future. But let's dive into the collapse of the West. Welcome to Dark New World. The world is changing fast. In recent times, you are only one look at your phone screen away to witness yet another history-changing event. For many, this is frightening. Most of us know that the world will change fundamentally. But we don't know what the end product is. And we don't know how and if we come out on the other side. Will life be better? Will it be worse? We only know that the status quo that we know will soon be no more. For many living in the West, which includes myself, the prospect of a fundamental change seems like a threat. Not only because it's new, but because all of us Westerners have benefited from the status quo. Our standard of living is unmatched. We enjoyed peace and prosperity for decades. The horrors of war or famine are just an abstract matter for us. If most of us want to go to Mexico for vacation, then we are able to. If most of us want to have a protein-rich diet, for example, to work out, we are able to. But the reality for the rest of the world can be very different from our standpoint. Life is simpler and harder for the majority of our species. But why are Western nations in danger? And why will events on the other side of the planet have an effect on my life? The first aspect we have to look into is our own economy and how we actually achieve the high standard of living we have. The interdependence of the world's economies, in short globalization, helped the West to achieve and defend its economic dominance. Globalization is good for business, but not everywhere. American companies have been known to use cheap foreign sweatshop labor to make cheap American goods. Wealthy, industrialized countries have shipped their trash to China and Malaysia. Exploiting cheap markets and lax regulations in developing nations has caused pollution and suffering in those countries, even as profits soar abroad. At mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where metals needed for electronics abound, gold and tungsten, tin and tantalum, armed militia groups, often using child soldiers, have taken over, keeping power with violence and trading minerals for guns. Though the world gold price quadrupled over 10 years and electronics have become even cheaper, Globalization has not alleviated the poverty and violence in the country. At the same time, globalization leads to the closing of factories in the West, because companies will naturally abuse the cheap workforce abroad to cut costs. This is why, for example, American cities known for manufacturing saw a steep decline when globalization really kicked off. But the system is very vulnerable. It needs one thing above all. And this is political and economic stability all over the world. If you build an iPhone in China, with components from Taiwan, wrapped in packaging from Thailand, and with raw materials from the Congo, it is not hard to understand that in times of geopolitical instability, these companies run into a complex set of problems. And after 30 years of relative stability in the world, we finally witnessed the beginning of the end of this system. The system that kept us alive and ensured our privileged position. The fantastic years in which opportunities are present everywhere are over. We are constantly talking about recessions and you won't find anyone who can tell you how things will look like in five years. Covid and the war in Ukraine disrupted our economic systems. Now we face uncertainty. And there are lines being drawn in the middle of this global ecosystem. Without the US, the Chinese economy would not function. Without China, the US economy would collapse. Without Russian raw materials, energy gets expensive and people in Europe cannot afford their standard of living anymore. Basic indicators of success like life expectancy, economic growth and poverty rates in Spain or the south of Italy and Greece, where more than one in six people are out of work, are already slipping behind the rest of the world. Even in Western nations faring well on paper, living standards have begun to drop. For a generation growing up in saturated cities like London, the average rate of pay might still be well out of reach for most people across the globe. But you are likely to have a far lower chance of owning a home or, in many cases, filing away enough cash to start your dream business. From the Vietnam War to the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was once a very concrete and almost universal sense that progress could only happen in one direction. 
that it would be liberal, democratic and based on a very European idea of how politics and economy works. The past decade has been a firm refutation of that notion, as evidenced by the capitalist success of communist China. And with growing European economies like Poland's and Hungary marching down a very illiberal route. In the US, the average income is falling back compared to housing prices and the increased cost of living. Across the nation, the pandemic accelerated a major divide between home values and income. Though conventional wisdom suggests most home buyers offer 1% to 3% over asking price in competitive markets. Low inventory and high demand drove some home buyers to desperate measures. To afford a home in 2021, Americans need an average income of $150,000, far more than the median household income of $70,000. This increased cost of living crisis is fueling the next problem in the US. It's political and cultural divide. Americans are completely divided about the economy, racial justice, climate change, law enforcement, international engagement, and a long list of other issues. The 2020 presidential election further highlighted these deep-seated divides. Supporters of Biden and Donald Trump believe the differences between them are about more than just politics and policies. A month before the election, roughly 8 in 10 registered voters in both camps said their differences with the other side were about core American values. And roughly 9 in 10, again in both camps, worried that the victory by the other side would lead to a lasting harm to the United States. But the US is hardly the only country wrestling with deepening political fissures. Brexit has polarized British politics, the rise of populist parties has disrupted party systems across Europe, and cultural conflict and economic anxieties have intensified old cleavages and created new ones in many advanced democracies. America and other advanced economies face many common strains over how opportunity is distributed in a global economy and how our culture adapts to growing diversity in an interconnected world. As political and economic crises are worsening, the divide in the US will increase, potentially up to a point where the stability of the country is in question. Americans seem to be obsessed with their own view at the world, while demonizing the other side. In a liberal democracy, dialogue is essential, and if America stays on the political trajectory thereon, the system will implode someday. But challenges await not only within the West, but on the world stage. China and Russia are openly attacking the US as the world's leading superpower. While the conflict in Ukraine is challenging the US, Europe and NATO militarily in the short term, the brewing conflict in China will be the endgame that decides the fate of the 21st century. In August 2021, the Taliban captured Kabul as the American forces hastily withdrew the chaotic mess. 20 years of US intervention in Afghanistan and the Middle East ended with a humiliating defeat. Only about half a year later, the Russia-Ukraine war broke out and the political, economic and geopolitical consequences threatened to destabilize the entirety of Europe. We are observing the failure of the hegemonic power to prevent a major military conflict initiated by another power, in this case Russia or China, in a geopolitically important area. And this could be proof that the decline of American hegemony has entered into its final phase. The phase of collapse. In the past, the collapse of a hegemonic power had brought about major conflicts between major powers, global economic crises, popular uprisings and revolutions, as well as miseries and devastations for hundreds of millions. As the American hegemony collapses, what consequences can we expect? Can the system manage to return to some form of equilibrium or will itself collapse as well? If the US withdrawal from the Middle East has made a future geopolitical collapse in the Middle East with devastating consequences for global energy supply and global economy, highly likely, the current Russia-Ukraine war has brought geopolitical catastrophe to the doorstep of Europe. Even before the Russia-Ukraine war, the European economy had been on a trajectory of relative decline. The European Union's share of global trade volume declined from 25% in 2005 to 18% in 2020. The economic prosperity of the European economy largely depends on its capacity to maintain advantages in certain high-tech manufacturing sectors, which in turn depends on supply of cheap energy as well as relatively stable and peaceful geopolitical environments. The Russia-Ukraine war has destroyed both conditions required for European prosperity. If the European economy collapses, it is unlikely for the European countries to remain politically and socially stable. The architecture of the European Union itself may become a question, but that's a topic for another video. As the US hegemonic power collapses, the existing world system will lose its capacity to solve system-level problems. 
To the extent that the world cannot function as a coherent system without constantly and effectively solving its problems. And then we have reached an historical turning point of transitioning from an existing system towards something else. But what will that be? Will humanity have sufficient time to complete the coming world historical transition before the foundation of civilization suffers from irreversible damage? We are on our way to find out. Unless the war in Ukraine turns into a world war. And at the moment, there is more escalation that we can observe than de-escalation. And this is exactly the topic of this video. And on the right, we talk about consequences of the earthquake in Turkey. And how it changed the upcoming elections. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. My name is Dennis. Thank you for watching and goodbye.